Hey everybody, Johnny K here with Master Photography Now, and today we're going to be talking about a famous image from World War II. It's uh, Independence Day tomorrow on uh, 2020, so we're going to be talking about a patriotic image uh, of the American flag, and uh, happy Independence Day. Uh, anyway, this image is from Iwo Jima in World War II and it has been called one of the most famous photographic or photojournalistic images of all time. And I'm sure you've seen it before. Uh, it's so popular that it's even become a statue in many places. Um, but also, we're going to talk about the history of this image, and I'm going to critique the image as well and see if we can make it any better. But before we do, please like and subscribe to Master Photography Now and write a comment below with what you think of this video and what you would like to learn about personally. And if you want to submit any of your images for critique, you can send them to john at kemmerling.com, john at kemmerling.com, and I will personally critique your images right here on the channel. All right, so let's get right into it. So this image, uh, it was actually photographed, believe it or not, twice. Um, so what happened was, there were two raisings on this mountain in Japan during the Battle of World War II. And he, this image is actually from the second flag raising. Uh, they put a larger flag the second time because the first flag was too small to be seen. And uh, maybe contrary to popular belief, uh, the war was actually not won when this flag was posted. This was done as sort of a, you know, like, we're here, we're coming to get you. And at the time, you know, Americans watched newsreels at a local theater. They didn't have the nightly news necessarily like we do now. Uh, so they would go in and they would see a newsreel. And so there was actually uh, a cameraman there with a film camera, a movie camera, also uh, recording, you know, filming film right next to the photographer when this happened. And so a funny part of the story is he set his uh, his Kodak speed graphic, which, by the way, is not speedy in any sense of the word. It's more like a turtle because it's a medium or large format camera where he would have to change the film after every shot. And not only that, it was a big and bulky camera and you had to manually rack focus everything and uh, it was just not speedy. Anyway, uh, they apparently he looked over as he was trying to set up his camera and they were already raising the flag. And so, so he nearly missed it. So he just picked up the camera and snapped it without looking through the viewfinder. And that, my friends, became one of the most famous images of all of photojournalism history. So um, there was a little bit of... Uh, conspiracy or, or controversy ar around this picture as well because um, well you know what before I get into that I'm gonna tell you also that a couple of the the individuals a couple of the soldiers here that were in the image a couple of them died shortly thereafter in the war so it is special uh, in that sense but as far as uh, you know the controversy um, there was another picture that was taken right after this and the photographer photographed a bunch of the uh, men who were over there fighting and uh, later he was asked by uh, journalism on staff like did you pose that photo and the journalist was talking about the flag raising picture and he said sure sure i posed it and so there was this big controversy that the whole flag raising image was contrived or uh, posed or what's the word staged um, but it wasn't staged necessarily in the sense that like you need to stand here and you need to stand here okay hold that all right we're gonna wait for the wind he, he didn't do that but it was essentially World War II propaganda to get people to believe in the war see that we were doing well to give the men morale, uh, to you know have people at home be in support of it. And so it was essentially propaganda and it was essentially staged just as not just not as much as they were wanting you to believe it was staged. Um, 
by by selling the the controversy. Uh, but all that aside, uh, it's it's a very patriotic moment. Uh, I'm a patriotic American, and I celebrate Independence Day, and I am happy for our independent independence from Great Britain. And uh, so with that in mind, let's get into talking about this image photographically. So there is actually uh, an exposure listed here, which, which is quite interesting. Let me find it here. Here it says, he set his speed graphic on the ground to 1 400th of a second shutter speed with f-stop between 8.11 and AGFA film. So at the time, you know, back in the, the 1940s, uh, you know, film wasn't as good as it is today. But we've all seen Ansel Adams' film, and we know that his black and fi- black and white film was as high a quality or higher quality than you know most photographers or cameras can do today. So uh, journalists would generally use a higher speed film just to make sure that they had enough speed to get the shot. Um, so. The fact that he was at a 400th of a second is interesting to me. That would definitely freeze the action. And an f-stop between 8 and 11, uh, you know, he, he looks like he was probably using slow film because he knew he was going to be in full sun. So this might have been like AGFA 50 or 25, something like that. Could have been, you know, uh, ISO 100, but it might have been overexposed a bit, which he could have done. Because uh, you can always compensate a little bit in the uh, developing. But if you don't care about all that technical crap, then uh, let's just talk about the shutter speed for a second. 400th of a second, that's actually pretty fast. And that should stop just about any motion. Uh, and so if you look in here, there's actually motion blur. You can see this guy moving. You can see the legs moving you can see the dirt flying with motion blur look at this guy's leg look how much it's moving i mean i've shot race cars at 400th of a second that didn't have this much movement so hmm maybe you didn't get your exposure right there buddy i doubt you were actually uh you know on the right setting it does appear to be slightly overexposed uh you can see a lot of shadow detail so you know I have a feeling it was probably more like f11 at like 125 right in there uh but you know hey who knows maybe it was 400th of a second and i'm just crazy but it doesn't look like it that's a lot of movement for 400th of a second okay so let's talk about composition on this picture you know the composition it's not great it's been cropped many times throughout the years to use on commemorative stamps and uh, magazine covers and things like that and cropping is useful especially if the guy just threw the camera up and didn't even you know he didn't even look through the viewfinder when he was composing this so good job for not looking right shooting from the hip but the way i see this is there's a lot of negative space going on here and it looks tilted slightly so the camera doesn't even look level the camera doesn't need to be level for every picture but it just feels a little off to me. So what I would do is I would actually crop this image and I would first level it with the mountains in the background here. So if you see this, I would I would get that close to level. Plus, I want to see this be more of a really nice diagonal going across the image. So it'll help us for both reasons, I think. So let's tilt it this way until we get the horizon a bit more level and this going more diagonally let's go just a little bit more and see what that looks like there we go okay and then i'm going to unlock our uh, ratio here because i don't want it to be i I don't want to be so squarish and then let's look at the uh intersecting thirds here right right now we're kind of missing the flag and here we're missing this guy this guy to me is the most interesting because he's got this superhero pose where he's like planting it in the ground Everybody else is just kind of like, hey, I want to be in the picture. Here, I'll help you. Because obviously it really doesn't take more than one or maybe two guys to raise this flag. But um, what what I would do is I would drop this down, get rid of some of this sky, and put this here on this guy and this here more on the flag. So let's do this, right? So we ha- now we have our centers of interest uh, between this guy and the flag, and we're just 
go in like this. So let's look at this after it's cropped. Okay, so this to me is a much more pleasing composition. And so the next thing I would say is the sky. You can see we've got some beautiful clouds in here, but there isn't a whole lot of detail. So what I would do is take the brush tool, okay, and then we're going to want to drop the exposure on the sky, make it more dark, and uh, we're going to increase the clarity as well as the contrast. Let's just bump it up a little bit. Okay, and then you can make your brush nice and big using the parentheses shortcuts. And I'll just start painting in the sky here. Okay, I don't want to get the flag, so we'll just kind of go around the flag. Okay, we'll come down and do that. All right, then I'm going to make the brush a little smaller. And we'll just kind of paint around the men here. And closer to the flag. Okay. Try not to hit the guys too much because you'll make the edges of them really dark. And then let's uh, paint this area right in here and under his leg. Okay. And so that to me looks a lot better. I would almost make another one and then do just another quick paint on this side. Okay, and we're going to fill all that in nice and beautiful. And it's too dark, so let's go ahead and raise the exposure on that second brush. Okay, maybe add just a bit more up in here. And maybe just, just a little dab right in there. Okay, so if you look at this now, and let's just make sure there's nothing else on the put the sharpness back to flat and the clarity okay in contrast and then let's just drop that exposure just a little there we go all right and then we can go in and we can add in just a little bit of vignette to make the edge of the picture let's do the post crop and we'll just darken the edge just a little bit more like right in there. And then what I would do is actually give it a bit of toning. So this is supposed to be a bright moment for the war, right? Uh, you know, you want to make people feel good about it. And so you can add a nice sepia tone, right? So we can, we can add some warmth in here to the shadows. And then maybe since the sky was most likely a little bit of blue and that's the brightest spot we could add a little bit of blue in the highlights and just raise it a little bit and now we have a split tone let's add a little more warmth in the shadows there we go and we'll add a little more blue up in there yeah. so you have a nice little split tone in this image now so if you look at this the cropped version uh, you can press y on your keyboard and you'll look at the unedited version versus the edited version now obviously i did this quickly and you could paint a lot more deliberately to get exactly where you want but if you look at the left image compared to the right, the right is much more dramatic and warm feeling. And then we also have it cropped to a much more pleasing perspective. So tell me, what did you think? What would you have done to this image? And did you learn something? Let me know if you learned something about this, uh, this image. Was it propaganda? Was it, uh, was it uh, too much controversy? Or was it pretty much what they were trying to tell? Uh, so again, you can please like and comment down below and let me know what you guys would like to learn about as well. And once again, for Master Photography Now, this is Johnny K. We'll see you soon.